So this is rental car number 42, and today I'm driving the 2017 Chevy Impala Premier. To be honest, when I got this car, I wasn't exactly thrilled. I always considered the Impala to be an old person's car. I think my granddad actually drove one for a couple of years. But I gotta admit, this is actually a pretty nice car. It probably doesn't hurt that this is the Premier configuration, which is just a fancy way of saying it's the most expensive model of the Impala that you can buy. I've actually driven a couple of these lately. I just want you to take a quick look at what the silver looks like. This is still the Impala Premier, but it's a different car that I drove about a month ago. I just want to show you that there are some different looks that you can get with this car, depending on what color choice you make. I don't know about you, but I think the black looks better, so let's switch back to that. I think the two things that I like most about this car are how comfortable it is to drive and how smooth it is. The smoothest really comes from the V6 engine that the Premier comes with. This is a 3.6 liter V6 with Chevy's variable valve timing feature. It's called a VVT. If I'm being completely honest, I really don't notice a, a difference between Chevy's V6 with a VVT and maybe just a standard Ford sedan with a V6. But what you should know is that this car is extremely smooth through all the gears. It shifts really nicely for you. I'm just continuing this theme of comfort. Uh, the Impala comes with 19 inch wheels. Chevy calls them their 19 inch machine faced aluminum wheels and these come standard on the Impala. I bring this up not so I can impress you with my extensive knowledge of Chevy's wheels, but just as one more example of how I think Chevy accomplishes a really smooth ride on the Impala. All right, so let's jump inside and take a look. This has a full leather interior, and I really do think Chevy has done a nice job of designing the inside of this car. I found all of the controls to be well within a comfortable reach while I was driving, and all the buttons seem to be made out of some pretty high-end plastic, so they feel really nice to touch. The key fob on this car is also really nice. It's a little bit light for my taste. I like a little bit more weight to my key fobs, but the buttons all feel great. It's a nice size, and you do have a retractable key, but you probably won't be using it because the Impala does come with a push button start. The button is located just to the right of the steering wheel. Things boot up relatively quickly. I'd say within four or five seconds, the car is completely on and ready to go. The steering wheel on this car is also pretty nice. Chevy tends to make their steering wheels a little bit thicker. I think it feels a little bit more like a truck, which is nice. Here's the cruise controls on the left-hand side, along with the collision control feature. I'll show you that in a minute. And then on the right-hand side, you get the standard buttons to interact with the entertainment features on your phone. And then right above the steering wheel, you get a really nice gauge cluster with a sizable color display right in the center. I really like this whole setup. I like how big the gauges are and how you have sort of a separate section for the fuel gauge. Plus, this digital screen is huge. Well, maybe not huge, but it's a lot bigger than most of the cars out there, and the colors are bright and easy to see. There's not a ton of menus here, uh, but that's okay because you get all the basic stuff that you really need. And this is the collision alert warning system. You activate it by pushing the button on the steering wheel right here. Essentially, if you get too close to a car in front of you that's slowing down, the car will beep and flash a very bright red light above the steering wheel to warn you that you're about to hit something. I actually played around with this quite a bit. I thought maybe I could trick the car into activating the alert feature if I tried to pass somebody and really cut it close, or if I pulled really close to a semi-trailer in front of me, but it never activated. The only time that the warning system ever went off was when a car had stopped suddenly in front of me and was turning into a parking lot, and I slowed down, but not quite as much as I should have. Only then did the, the alert go off. That's one time after driving these cars for probably six or seven hours. I guess this is my long-winded way of saying that the alert doesn't go off just randomly. It actually seems pretty useful. Now this car also comes with a lane departure warning feature, and the button to turn that on and off is located right here. You can tell if the system is activated by looking at the center screen. Do you see that green light down there that's now flashing? It flashes and beeps when you're actually leaving your lane. So I tested this quite a bit of times, and if you just slightly go over the white line, the system will beep and let you know that you've departed from your lane. However, this doesn't have the automatic nudging feature, which uh, some of the new Toyotas do. Essentially, it doesn't push you back in the lane. The Impala just lets you know that you're drifting out of your lane. This bottle also comes with blindside detection, so there is a little bit of an indicator light right here on the rear view mirror, it's kind of hard to see. Essentially, when someone's in your blind side, the yellow light pops up and lets you know, 
And if you are attempting to turn while someone is in your blind side, that yellow light will actually blink when you put on your turn signal. So jumping back into the car and talking about the controls on the left side of the steering wheel, this is where the parking brake feature is. This is not your standard parking brake. It's an electronically controlled one. So you just pull up on this little lever to activate the parking brake and then push down on it to deactivate the brake. I love these. I think it makes driving the car a lot easier. I just wish Chevy had put this over by the start or the gear shift instead. Shifting over to the right of the steering wheel, you get a really nice size touchscreen with the Impala. It's a big size, nice bright colors, and not a whole lot of features, which I think is a good thing because when you want to find something, there's just four dedicated buttons right here on top, and you can get to where you need to really quickly. Now, there are some dedicated buttons down here to help you navigate through the touchscreen even quicker, and then if you press this center button right here, the screen will actually go up, and it reveals a pretty nice size storage space back here with a USB connection. Now I played around with this a little bit and it easily fit my oversized cell phone. You can even close the screen and lock that thing up uh, pretty nicely. Below the touchscreen are the climate controls. These are, in my opinion, perfect. You have digital readouts to tell you exactly what temperature there is. You have dedicated buttons for all the important features and everything has a real nice sort of rubber top to it. You can kind of see those grooves on top of the dials. Anyway, it makes it really easy to grab and turn the knobs. Uh, all in all, I think Chevy did a great job with the climate controls on the Impala. Below the climate controls, you get a nice little storage area right here. It's not big enough to store a cell phone. Honestly, this feels kind of like they just threw a storage space where the uh, ashtray used to be. But it is nice that you get a nice DC outlet right here to help you charge your cell phone. And then moving a little further back, you see the gear shift. I mean, nothing special here. I did notice it's a little bit clunky, uh, which I'm not a fan of. It didn't really shift smoothly, but uh, not a deal breaker. It works fine. And then finally, moving even further back, you get the controls for the heated seats. Uh, it was about 95 the day I drove this car, so I didn't try them out, but I'm sure they work fine. The back seat on the Impala is nice. I mean, it's nothing to get excited over, but it does have a couple of nice features for your passengers. First off, you do get a center armrest that folds down in the center seat. It's also elevated a little bit. Uh, a lot of them like to sit actually on the seat itself, so it's pretty comfortable to rest your arm here. In the back of the center armrest for the driver and front passenger, you do get this small storage unit right here. Can't imagine what you would store here, uh, but there is also a DC power adapter outlet at the very bottom. Legroom wise, you get a lot of space back here. I'm about six feet tall. This passenger seat was pushed back a really comfortable distance, and I still have six to eight inches of legroom easily. And since we're in the back seat, I want to talk about my only major criticism of the Impala, and that's the visibility out of the rear window. I think it helps to look at the car from the outside to kind of get a feel for what I'm talking about, but the trunk space is so high that the rear window is really small and I found it very difficult to see out of the back window, especially when I was trying to pull out of my driveway. Now you do get a rear facing camera, so you can use that when you're in reverse, but I gotta be honest, this is pretty bad and it might be a deal breaker for me. Uh, safety is a big consideration when I purchase vehicles or rent them for that matter, and this is just this is just really bad. So I would really test drive this car if you consider buying it, or at least jump in if you're about to rent it and kind of take a look. Let's close things out by actually talking about this trunk space. You do get a really big rectangular space. The wheel wells don't infringe on the space that much. And because, as I mentioned, the trunk is so high, you'd actually get quite a bit of depth back here too. I was able to easily store my stuff back here without any problems and the rear seats do collapse so you can actually open this up even further if you want to store larger items. All right, so that's the 2017 Chevy Impala Premier in both black and silver. After driving this car for, well, two days with the black and two days with the silver, probably over 350 miles, I'm going to give this car Four stars. The Chevy Impala is a great four-door sedan. I just can't give it five stars because of the low visibility out of the rear window. So thank you so much for watching. Please check out the description. I put a ton of more details about this car down there. And I hope you'll join me next time when I drive my 43rd rental car.